Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon, uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member. Uh, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. Now, <laughs> Chief Justice Taney, uh, the, the court that Chief Justice Taney was uh, in charge of decided the Dred Scott case. And at this point, you know, in the 1850s, the the temperature on, on slavery was turning. People were, people kind of looked at it and, and didn't really like it because it kind of turns out that when you say black people don't count as people because you can't see them in the, in the nighttime, most Americans are kind of like off put by that. You know, like, like a lot of people are like, oh, that's fucked up. We should, we should probably stop doing that. And at this time, there were some states that were free states and other states that were slave states because, you know, the economy. And I, I, have a, I have a pretty simple rule, I think. I feel like we can all go by this rule. I think we can all abide by this rule. If you have an economy that can't run efficiently and effectively without the use of slavery, then maybe you're not ready for an economy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can... You can go back to like trading sheep and rocks and anvils or some shit. I don't know. You can. <laughs> we'll we'll make you in charge of 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 money when you figure out how not to own people for the sake of profit. <laughs> then we can give you your money. <laughs> now, Dred Scott was was a pretty monumental case. Uh, Dred Scott was a slave that was taken to a, a free state by his master, and therefore Scott concluded that he was a free man and he had the right to determine his own life. So he chose to stay in the free state, which is something that he could do. And it, I think it makes sense to everybody, you know, and, and literally everyone that agrees that, I don't know, maybe owning human beings is a bad idea. That's something we shouldn't do as a society. But his master thought otherwise, of course, uh, and, may, and you know, this case made its rounds uh, in the lower circuit and eventually wound up in the desk of the Supreme Court. And Justice Taney, pictured here so elegantly, uh, thought he could put an end to the entire slavery argument using his judicial might, right? He could use the courts to once and for all make the decision on, on slavery. And he stated that uh, black people are not and will never be seen as people and therefore cannot get the rights of a citizen. If there was a mic, I think he would have tried to drop it and expected a standing ovation at that time. Like, dude was very proud uh, of, of the decision he made. Uh, he did not get a standing ovation. What he did get instead was a brand new set of robes. Yeah, uh, Justice Taney turned in his traditional black judge's robes 
for a more white ghost-like robe. Yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. I, yep, yeah, I did. And you started, started to go with my Supreme Grand Dragon Tawny instead. <laughs> Oh, some of you were like, oh, the KKK references end at that point. I was like, nope, we're going one step further. We're going one step further. <laughs> Just like this motherfucker was like, I'll go one step further than the Constitution, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this is a point of shame for the Supreme Court, right? Like, much like Germany 1936 to 1945, Nobody likes to talk about this little piece of history. Usually when Justice Tawney is brought up by lawyers and judges, they just start talking about the weather. You know, they're like, oh, look how nice it is outside. Is this, this is nice weather for July, isn't it? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. they, they're talking about cheese or some, some shit or like, they're just like, Lincoln was pretty cool, right? You guys like Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> for the love of God, please, anything but this. <laughs> And look, in this instant, Blinken was pretty awesome. Uh, he pushed back against Tawny and disregarded his decision uh, and basically set out his entire administration to uphold equal rights for every single person. Now, Tawny, uh, <laughs> Tawny's decision did escalate tensions between the states because the free states didn't want to comply and say that, that black people should, are, are not people. And the slave states were like, fuck yeah, they are. This is pretty cool. And it eventually led to uh, the Civil War, which technically would mean that his decision was treasonous because that is one of the major re things that, that accounts for treason is if you start a war, if you wage war against one's own nation, that is considered treason. Uh, so therefore, I don't think he should just be disbarred from the country. Uh, I think he should have been disbarred from the entire throne of the Supreme Court. But uh, that did not happen to Justice Taney. Lucky for him, he died. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that's pretty much the only way this can be replaced, right? Under the Judiciary Act of 1789, our very first president, George Washington, specified that there needs to be at least six judges and they served until they either died or retired. And this, of course, creates loads of problems, right? If you have a bad president, theoretically, you can vote them out uh, in four years. And undoing four years of damage is far easier than undoing 30 to 40 years worth of damage. And that's how long most Supreme Court judges serve. They serve like a minimum of 30 years. It's not a requirement to serve that long, obviously. We just talked about that. But, but that's how long these, once they get into office, they live, is they live at least 30 years. Uh, and, and really think about it. Like, not, nobody really retires from the, uh, from the Supreme Court. And think about it. Like, if you were like a judicial genie uh, that could grant the wishes that you wanted or possibly your own party, that, that got you in wanted, w would you really retire early to, you know, bring like a, a fresh new genie with like a whole new set of wishes? You know, fuck no, you wouldn't. <laughs> of course you wouldn't, right? Some of those genies uh, might think black people are like real people and like women should vote. Ooh, that those genies are basically communists and should have never gotten the power of wishes, you guys. You should have never done it. <laughs> and that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. 
Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on wh when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.